Welcome to another Bugatti Analysis video. Today I would like to talk about the intercoolers. We have a very nice shot of the internals here, and we can see the ductings coming from the roof scoop. We can see a possible air filter position in green. We can see two intake pipes that are running downwards to the two turbochargers either side. And we can also see one map sensor. This looks like an oil tank, which sits under the fuel flap in the bodywork. And here is the intercooler. The two turbochargers per side are sitting pretty low, so it's likely that the intercoolers are fed from below and the upper connector is the outlet towards the engine. The collector is quite thin and the hose towards the engine is a pretty small diameter for an air system. There is one either side and the special thing about it is that they changed them from water to air intercoolers in the Shiran and Veyron to air to air intercoolers. This helps to save weight because you need one radiator less in front as you can see in this picture which shows the low temperature cycle for the charge air cooling in a Veyron. You don't need a pump, an expansion bottle, water hoses and less water is running through the whole car. The disadvantage of an air to air cooler is that you cannot position them wherever you want because you need to make sure that a decent airflow runs through them. In addition to that, their radiator net volume is bigger and also the intercooler pipes are much bigger, which is a packaging issue. And so they tried to package the biggest possible intercoolers at the site. It looks like it wasn't possible to make them any higher or wider, so it looks like they made them as deep as possible. More depth gives you more volume and cooling, but it's also reducing the efficiency because while the air is flowing through the intercooler, it's getting warmer and the temperature difference is decreasing, which means less cooling performance. Additionally, the boundary layer within the radiator is getting bigger and increased drag. So most efficient radiators have a big and thin net. The intercoolers have two ducts to force air through them. You can see that the lower one is missing in this picture and I was wondering why. We will see why that is in a minute. As we can see in this picture, there are a lot of components directly behind the radiator net, so the flow exit looks compromised. One cool feature that I didn't expect is the additional air duct running through the door. This is for the lower and hotter part of the intercooler net. We can see it here towards the back when the door is open. The lower duct is for the lower net, the upper duct is for the upper net. So if we look at these pictures carefully, we can see that there are two different cars. One is the black and blue presentation model, and the other one is the driving car with the colorful wrap. It could be the same car if they removed the wrap, but I noticed this cutout in the driving car, which was covered at the presentation model. It seems to me as if they had a clash between the bodywork and the lower duct, so they have to remove the lower duct to be able to fit the bodywork and the other way around. And actually, if we look at this picture, we see exactly that. The duct is sticking through the bodywork and they could clash. Well, I think that is something that they will probably fix for the later production model, but it also shows you that even in such a project not everything runs smoothly. It's still a great car. So thank you for watching.